We're back with another season of the Aberdeen series. I think it's season five now. We're still aiming to try and win that Champions League at some point soon. And we have had a huge, huge transfer window, our biggest one yet, in the hopes of getting our team at least closer to being able to compete in those Champions League knockout stages. Plenty of sales, plenty of incomings, totaling to about 50, 60 million at this point with room for more business. So let's run the intro and get right into it. Hello everybody, welcome back to the Aberdeen series. Hope you're all doing great. As mentioned, today we are starting our fifth season here as Aberdeen boss. We've had a big transfer window and we'll be watching our first game today. Some big players coming in, ones I think can really take our team to another level. But before we start though, as always, I'd like to ask you guys, the legends that you are, to keep hitting that like button for me. It takes a few seconds to do and will help with the video's performance. Drop a comment down below. I definitely will read them all. I'm trying to get back to them as soon as possible and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already so we can get closer to that 16,000 mark. And the final thing, I always do this at the start of each season just to let you know there is a Discord linked in the description should you want to join that. And also if you're subscribed, there is the option there to hit the join button which will allow you to become a channel member which supports the channel financially and also gives you guys some extra perks here on the channel. But with that being said, let's start season five, shall we? You can see our facilities are absolutely flying at the minute. But a big update in our facilities is that our current stadium is not going to be around much longer. I asked for an expansion. The board said, no, why don't we just build a whole new stadium? This one's too old and too hard to maintain. So we're getting rid of our current stadium. And soon, I don't know how many years it's going to be, but soon we'll be moving in to a new stadium. Hopefully 30,000 capacity would be nice. I feel like we want to up the capacity a little bit with our side becoming a lot better now. And speaking of our side becoming better, as mentioned, we have had a big transfer window. You'll see here some names you might not recognize. Mason Hancock as well been promoted to vice captain now that Ross McCrory's gone but let me show you the players that we've bought in we'll start off with our outgoings, I think. Just to let you know, we started off with an £8 million budget here, but our first sale was Jaden Richardson, who has gone to Fulham in the Premier League. So a nice move for him for £9 million. We didn't have him last season. He was loaned out in the Championship, where he actually did really well for Preston. He came back. I didn't see him in my plans for that right-back position, so we've decided to sell him on. Obviously, for Fulham, it's a decent deal. He's an English player who could get better and help the squad out. But for us, we'll take the cash. We didn't need him. We he loaned him out for a reason and we could reinvest it. So a really, really nice fee there to get £9 million for a player that wasn't even part of our team. One of the sadder sales, a player that's been with us for a long time, Andres Caro, has left to join Besiktas out in Turkey, where he's going to be a regular starter and good luck to him. He's a player that the fans love. He's actually, if you go on the club info screen, he is on the favoured personnel list higher than me and Duke, which is quite surprising in my opinion, but he is. He's a very well-liked player, but he has left now. It was one of those where they came in for him. He decided he'd like to go there. I had a few options lined up in centre-back already. And I thought, you know what? If he wants to make that move, we can't really hold him back. The problem with our club at the minute is, even though our reputation has grown to three and a half stars, it's still not the best. So any club with a higher reputation are going to be able to easily convince our players to want to leave. On top of that, the players that join are still going to want release clauses because they don't see us as the final destination in their career yet. Once we get up to four, four and a half stars, we should be able to avoid a lot of the problems that we're having, but that is going to take some time. But yes, Andres Caro unfortunately does leave the club. We got a nice fee of about £7 million for him. A player that wasn't always starting regularly non-stop but when he did play especially in the last two years he did a great job but we've turned in £800,000 signing into £7 million in a few years whilst also getting some very good years out of him so fair play Andres Caro we say goodbye to you and we move on. Vinny was one of the first stars of this team, Vinny Basuan. He's been with us since right at the start of his save but you can see in that inside forward position that he played there are a few different players or five players, there you go, considered better than him, which goes to show why we loaned him out at the end of last year to try and keep some interest in him and keep him playing football. And he did do half decent with Utrecht out on loan in Vieira de Vise, and it's convinced Krasnodar to come along a Russian side and they've bid six million for him. That was a bit of a bidding war, actually, a few teams offering a similar value and we just accepted it. I know his transfer valuation is now higher, but he's also been given, you know, 20, 30 grand extra than what we 
we were paying him a week. And you can see once he's moved away, the coaches don't really rate him all that highly. He wasn't really a big game player, but I've got to say he did contribute a fair bit in the seasons he was here. But if you actually look back at what he did for us, not crazy, is it? I mean, he never scored more than 10 goals a season, only twice getting more than five. So Vinny has left us. I think it's a good deal for both parties. He moves on and we make a nice bit of cash. A surprise exit for our goalkeeper, Ivan Nevistic, was not really one that was on my cards, although in the January window, you might remember we had a few bids for him and he nearly left, but now he actually has. He's gone to Lazio out in the Italian divisions. The 28-year-old goalkeeper was one of the more experienced players in our squad, and that is something we have lost, by the way, a lot of experience. And I do think we need to add some older players to the club just to mix out that balance of youth and experience. But Nevistic has left us. I think we've got an adequate replacement but he was good for us in the two years he was here. We signed him for a hundred grand from Zagreb. Now he leaves for five million to the Serie A where he's going to be Lazio's backup goalkeeper. Good luck to him. He's a player that did very well for us. Brilliant in the air, brilliant in terms of commanding his area, but the sweeper keeper has gone at Neverstitch. We say goodbye, another five million in the bank to reinvest into our team. And now for the sales of players you probably haven't heard of and aren't massive sales, but Paul Ocon here, we signed him for free last season in the hopes of selling him on in a few years. And we did exactly that. Signed him for free, loaned him out for a year. He comes back and we make 1 million from him. He's gone to St. Truden out in the Belgian divisions and we cut ties. We make a mill, a decent player, but we make some nice cash off him without ever really having to develop him. So pretty good business in my eyes. And we did that with another player. And that's young midfielder Darius Stalmach, who we picked up on a free from AC Milan. Again, loan him out for the year to the Belgian divisions. Didn't play great. And straight away, we sell him on for about half a million of profit. He's gone to Legia Warsaw out in Poland, the Polish under 21 international. Hopefully he can play there and make his way into the national team, but we've cut ties and made some money. That's all of our sales done. Everybody else was on loans and I'll show you the list of them in a minute. Um, but the main notable one was Connor Barron, obviously a midfielder who's been in and around the first team, particularly a couple of seasons ago was really good, but now it's got to the point where he isn't playing all that much. So I thought, you know what, we'll give him a year on loan and AZ Alkmaar came in for him, arguably a step up for him whilst he goes on loan and I'm sure he can tear up the Eredivisie, prove that he's worth playing for us and then come back. Otherwise he'll do well out there and we'll probably sell him on next season if it doesn't turn out very well but Conor Barron has gone out on loan but don't worry we have signed some great players. The first one was a new goalkeeper. Obviously Ivan Neverstitch, a 28 year old goalkeeper kind of in the prime of his career was always going to be very good for us and hard to replace but we've decided to sign this man, the Norwegian international starting goalkeeper by the way with 50 appearances, Jasper Torkildsen, who's only 22 years of age and like I say, is an international already for a pretty decent side. He loves big matches. He's got great aerial reach, so he's really tall. I mean, he's six foot something, isn't he? Six foot six, yes. 19 aerial reach, brilliant and I mean brilliant at one-on-ones amazing reflexes likes to rush out with great throwing positioning and vision I mean the only things that let him down are his passing and his kicking but that's not the end of the world I certainly think he's a great goalkeeper he comes in for five million from Molde where he was basically starting for the best club in Norway in goal he's been playing very well for them he comes into us for the exact same price we paid for Neverstitch and if you actually go to competitions and then to the season preview you'll see he is considered the best goalkeeper in the division valued at 20 million we paid five million pounds for him i think that's great business with the andres caro money that we made i decided you know what we need some more scottish players in this team and liam morrison was pretty decent for his on loan last year i mean he wasn't absolutely crazy blow you away but he got a seven average match rate in across the course of a season we basically used all of that andres caro money just to bring in liam morrison straight away he joins us and by the way i think andres caro does have a percentage of next sale clause so if he goes on to be the next big thing we make some cash from it but yes we bought in Liam Morrison for seven and a half million pounds a very good young centre-back already a Scottish international with nine appearances he's someone that's going to be around for a long time has a lot of room to grow and we're very happy to have him back and hopefully now that he's actually our player we can take a bit more time and care into developing him because we know he's not just going to sell tick he's actually coming to us and of course we have also taken a player off of our rivals which is always a good thing. At left back last year we had Heldasar and Jack McKenzie as our left back options. This year I've loaned out Jack McKenzie. I'm looking to use Heldasar as our backup left back basically and in comes Josh Wilson S. Brand who we had on loan a few years ago from Manchester City and he was 
decent for us, but I didn't want to pay the 10 million or whatever it was that Man City were asking for. He then went back to Man City, started one game in the Premier League, came on in two appearances, but got three assists altogether and a great average match rating. And he actually played in a few different competitions and did half decent. So he's someone that we've always kept our eyes on. Man City had transfer listed him three million pounds. I mean, I think it's a good deal. An Englishman, former under 21 international. He's quick, good crosser, but he also does the defensive side well. I think he suits our left back position nicely, a player that we know already. And I think it's nice business. We haven't spent a crazy amount on him and the recruitment here is pretty good. But the biggest signing and the one that's gone down as a real coup within this football manager world is our signing of Serbian 19 year old centre back, Vasilje Vuletic. Now he is someone that is really interesting because one, he's played 10 games for Serbia with one goal at the age of 19 at centre-back. So a 19-year-old full international centre-back for a decent European side who, if I remember correctly, he went really far with them in the World Cup. Yes, he took them all the way to the semi-final and he was playing in a lot of these games. So he's a full international centre-back playing at a World Cup level at the age of 19. The only things that might bother you is his consistency is supposedly low but he is young I do think his attributes are still very very good he comes in as our best centre back supposedly and also apparently our best right back how true that is I'm not sure but I'm very happy to have him on board we didn't break the bank we paid 5.5 million pounds for him and considering he's supposedly not very consistent he did really well for Red Star played a lot of games for them last year at a good level he was good on an international front and I'm hoping that means he can do well for us he's strong physically maybe not the tallest but we're very happy to have him another wonder kid to have at our Aberdeen side and we still have eight million pounds left to spend with 30 grand in the budget so I imagine there's still going to be a few more transfers coming in next episode but just to show you we've made 29 million pounds or so from transfers and spent 21 we still got the eight million pound balance and for those interested there you go these are all the players that have gone out on loan this year hopefully they can all develop get some good football and we can find some stars from our youth academy to bring into our first team which which is something that we have done this year. So let me show you our goalkeeping options. We have Jasper Torkilton, the new sign-in, and Tom Ritchie. At right back, we have got Estevez and Mike Wilson, Valetic, I'm not going to use at right back. So we're very happy with our side there. Mike Wilson, of course, being the youth academy player that we bought through. And I think he looks like someone that has a very bright future. I'm pretty certain he is going to play for Scotland at some point in this save. Left back, we've got Wilson Esbrand and Helder Saar with Mason Hancock if we really need him. At centre-back, it's Valetic, Morrison, Beso, and Hancock. A nice mix of players there. In midfield, we've got Sergio Gomez, Leighton Clarkson, Guy Buer, Sharon Dor. On top of that, you add Kozlowski, Ibrahimovic into the mix. And this season, another Youth Academy player promoted, Trevor Fivey, who came in a couple of years ago on a youth intake, a six foot four central midfielder. He's got an eye for goal, good passing range, and is very physically dominant. By the looks of it, could play at Eredivisie level because there's a lot of teams that seem to want him on loan. He can be a consistent player. He's been playing for the Scotland under 21s. Last year, he was out on loan with Partick Thistle, one of the top sides in the second division of Scotland, and did well enough for me to think, you know what, we'll make him part of the team this year, give him some chances here and there, and hopefully he can impress. And then going forward, we haven't made too many changes. We've got Patrick Vollemark, Duke, Ryan Duncan. We've also got Apertray, Perea, Odeber, and then up front, we have our man Oscar Wilhelmsen. And also Alfie Babbage is going to come in as a backup striker this year. We had him since the start of his save from the Youth Academy. He's gone on loan to two divisions, not played that much football, not been amazingly impressive, but I think there's still a player in there. So we'll give him this season as a backup, see how he gets on. And if it doesn't work out, he's got a pretty good transfer value that we could sell him for. So there you go. That is now our squad. And if you look by age, we've only got two players over the age of 25 in the first team, which is why I think we need a bit more experience and depth. There's a few players that might still leave. Leighton Clarkson wanted by Nottingham Forest. We've got Sheridan Dorr wanted by Palace. That could be a pretty big deal if that goes over the line because he's valued at nearly 10 million, as is Leighton Clarkson. So we'll see if any of those go ahead. We've still got money to spend. There's players I'm keeping my eye on, but this game did come round before for any of the others it's our first league game of the season and we're playing Livingston away so hopefully we can get a win in our friendlies we drew 1-1 with Arsenal we beat Spartans 7-0 in a friendly lost 1-0 to Valencia 
beat Ellen United 15-0, which was pretty impressive, but they are pretty much an amateur side, I believe. Beat Juventus 4-2, which was an interesting one, and then played the Blythe Spartans and won 10-1 there. So we're doing really well in our friendlies. And now it's time for our first game of the season and the only game that we'll show in this episode to kick off our year. So let's get on with it, shall we? Here we go. Let's pick our team. I don't even know what we're going to go for. But I think Torkilton, yes, we'll see a debut from him. Estevez, what's his fitness looking like? Remains short of full fitness. Do we maybe just start Mike Wilson? No, he's even worse today. Okay, we'll start Estevez. It looks like a few players are still tired from friendlies. At the back, we're going to go for... Um, I guess, yes, Valetic is going to start with Liam Morrison, although neither of them are really ball-playing centre-back, so that might not work well. But right now, our two ball players are quite tired. Heldesar um, has got to start because Wilson S. Brand is also tired still. Our midfield, I think I'm going to go for this. Gomez, Ibrahimovic and Kaspar Kozlovski will have Oscar Pereira on the left, Apatre on the right. Up front, our options are Duke or Wilhelmsen. Wilhelmsen's injured, so I think we go for Duke. We use Alfie Bavage off the bench. I've mixed the bench around a little bit and with that being said I think we have our side ready to go I do not know what I've just clicked there have I just moved someone around no, I think we're okay. I don't know what I just did, but I pressed something. But either way, our team's ready to go. Maybe not the full fitness that we'd want them to have, but hopefully we can make it through anyway. Kasper Kozlowski is apparently going to be the captain for today's game. So let's do that. And also, Jesper Torkildsen will take the number one shirt. Liam Morrison is going to take the number 12 shirt and we are good to go. Hopefully we can get off to a bright star, but away to Livingston won't be the easiest match in the world. It won't be the hardest either, mind you, but I want a good start and hopefully we can get off to that here. So let's get underway. Livingston are lining up with a 4 2 3 1. We're going for the 4 3 3 still. And if you look at our team now, it's amazing how far we've came. Duke is still up front, yes, but Apatre world-class wonder kid. I mean, look at this guy. Amazing, amazing player. On the left, you've got Perea, who's a Colombian regular and played in the World Cup. You've got Kozlowski and Ibrahimovic, two very good young options. Gomez, who again played for Colombia in the World Cup at only the age of 19, already has 10 international appearances. You've got Helder Saar, Goncalo Estevez, two wonder kid centre-backs and a brilliant young goalkeeper. This is a great side and we're only going to get better because they are so young. I've spoken to my friend recently who watches a series called Michael and he's probably watching right now so hello and he's been criticizing my choice of bringing players in and then selling them or having a release clause and losing them but at this stage this kind of is the game plan with Aberdeen here as I mentioned the reputation isn't high enough for us to really be able to hold on to those stars if you're playing for Aberdeen and Manchester United come into you or a Premier League side come in for you you're going to want to go there right so that's basically what's happening in this save we're having forced release clauses but over time as we build our reputation we're going to grow the club to the point where these players want to stay so I do think the game plan is working here at Aberdeen you can see each year we are getting better and progressing in Europe. Champions League knockout stages last year. Hopefully this year we can get there again. I have kind of skipped over it, but we have just scored a goal with Duke going in. But just to show you, clearly offside and it's been disallowed. But nearly our first goal of the season. And of course it was going to be Duke, who has been here right from the start. But it's not going to count just yet. But 20 minutes in, we are looking like the dominant side. It would be nice if we could see something from one of our new players today. Um, but you know what? As long as we come out with a win, even if it's just like a 1-0 ugly win, we won't mind here today. Celtic, even though we have won the league the last two years, are staying pretty close to us. So we do need to make sure we are picking up as many wins as possible. Obvious enough to be said, of course, but still Celtic are right up your tail the whole season. So we need to make sure we win these kind of games, no matter how early on in the year it is. And this looks like it might be a highlight for us. We're building it out nicely. Kozlowski goes forward to Oscar Pereira. He's going to cut inside onto that right foot. Is he going to bend it in? Oh, very nearly. It's a good save from a Livingston goalkeeper. But that is what Pereira can do as the inside forward. He's really settled down. We're hoping that we can see a similar thing from Apatre this year, who, like Pereira was when he first joined, wasn't great. But hopefully over time, as he learns the language and learns the club and learns the tactic, he can start playing well and more importantly, playing well consistently. What the hell has just happened? I think Goncalo Estevez has just scored from pretty much off the pitch. I was just chatting absolute rubbish about our team. I can't even remember what I was talking about. And Estevez has just decided to score from there. So he takes the throw in. It gets knocked back to him. Is that a cross? Yes, it is. Apparently it was a cross. The goalkeepers came out to get it. And it's ended up going into the net. What a brilliant start from Estevez. We'll certainly take it. He didn't mean it. And you don't usually see those kind of goals in Football Manager. 
but it's a goal nonetheless. And we get started with our first goal of the season, and it's a very impressive one. And we nearly get a second there with Apatre winning the header from the free kick. And George is going to kick it again for Livingston. We bring it down nicely. It's going to be Valetic. There he is at the back, our new number four. He plays Gomez to Kozlowski to Pereira. We're going for a second before half time. We've given it away. Morrison steps up nicely, though, to win it back. Kozlowski again loses the ball, though. And it is going to be Livingston on the counter. Can we defend? No, we can't. They're in. And Livingston nearly score, but it's the first save from Jesper Torkeldsen, the 22-year-old six foot six goalkeeper who has brilliant one-on-one -on -one ability. And we saw it there with a great save. Livingston, though, are going to try and follow him from the corner. It comes in, but Duke rises first and heads it away. And that's a slight scare there. With all the chances we have, our XG isn't very high at all. Livingston actually have a higher XG from that one chance there. So we need to be better in that sense. But possession is all us. We're playing good football and that's all that matters right now. We've got some good players to bring on in this second half. I think we'll likely see some Guy Buer action. Also hopefully get on Alfie Bavage, Trevor Fivey for his debut as well. It would be nice to get all of these guys onto the pitch. But so far so good in this match. We just need to hope there's no like Livingston surprises as we nearly had earlier there. Maybe that was the wake up call we needed to wake us up a little bit. But Livingston are going again. They're looking for that goal to make it 1-1. It comes in and it's another brilliant save from Tork Elton, making himself a hero straight away, staying strong, getting big and making that stop. And it stays at 1-0 for now. What is good to see though, remember at the start of this series, when we had matches like this away, we had no fans turning up. No one wanted to come watch us. Now, the whole away end is pretty much booked out with Aberdeen fans, which is great to see. And Livingston have got empty seats themselves. Look at that. There are our fans behind the goal, filling every single seat. We're clearly impressing with the football. And that's why they are building a new stadium. The club seems to think it's better to build a new stadium than improve the old one. One, because we're going to need more seats. But also, they said our current stadium was too old and it's too expensive to try and keep maintaining it. So they'd rather just build a new one. So that is a pretty new, fun era for the club a new stadium coming in I'm, I'm sure some Aberdeen fans will be upset about it but we're moving on to bigger and better things hopefully here as a club and 60 minutes in it's time to make some changes mainly for fitness sake let's get Voletic off who has a decent debut but we don't want to get him injured just yet so on comes Mason Hancock Duke hasn't had the best of games so we are going to bring on Alfie Bavage here who else is tired we've got Kasper Kozlowski pretty tired. We'll bring on Guy Buer there. Ibrahimovic can come off for Trevor Fivey for his debut. And then we've got one more sub. And um, I think we'll just go for one of Apatre or Perea. I think Perea looks the more tired. So let's get Odeba on for him. And this team should still be more than good enough to get us over the line. It would be nice to see like a cheeky debut goal from 5e. Or maybe even Bavage get on the score sheet who played for us a few times in the first year we were here at Aberdeen and just hasn't developed much yet despite having a lot of promise. And But it looks like we might just be grinding a 1-0 win here despite the fact that over the course of the game... Livingston have had the same XG as us. The amount of chances we've had and possession haven't ended up leading to actual good chances. We've just had volume of chances. But hopefully we can get a second here. And it is Odebert to Gomez. Nice football. The ball's going to fall out to Guy Buer, who, oof, bloody hell, hits it on the slice volley. Nearly takes the goalpost out with that one. Very nearly an absolute worldie there from Guy Buer. But currently it's Estevez's scuff cross. The only real chance of the game. And it was barely a chance. And it's ended up in the net. And we'll certainly take it. It's not been the prettiest of performances, but it looks like it's going to be that missed fired cross that's going to get us over the line and get us the three points. And that's exactly what's happened. A good start to the season. We take the 1-0 win. We move on. And hopefully now, once everyone gets back to fitness and starts, you know, getting used to everyone again, coming off of their holiday breaks, they've all been playing World Cup football. We're not going to expect everyone to be playing at 100% quality already. But yes, we've got lots of money still to do transfer business. I'll probably bring it back for our next Champions league game but yes money to spend hopefully some new players to come in maybe some players to leave it's all to play for but i think our new side here our new young wonder kid filled side is ready to try and take the world by storm and if not at least make a lot of profit along the way so there you go that's the end of episode one of season five if you did enjoy smash the like button for us subscribe for more and i'll see you next time thank you and goodbye